There were numerous incidents and videos which have showed the close collaboration of armed civilians or parastate actors and the Colombian police. Most notably in Cully on the 10th of May and 28th of May where armed civilians came onto the street to shoot at protesters while standing alongside members of the police. The response of the Colombian president to these incidents was to tell the protesters to go home, whilst at the same time remaining silent regarding the apparent paramilitaries and the police operating <coughs> side by side. The response of the Colombian government to the protests and the violence of the police only highlighted further that this is a government more determined to stigmatise protesters than ensure their protection. In 2016, peace agreement, the peace agreement was a historic moment that brought genuine optimism to many, particularly in the most impoverished regions of the country. The advancement of the transitional justice system should be particularly celebrated, and I want to congratulate the unwavering commitment of the FARC to the peace process, both in terms of the former combatants trying to create new lives under enormous difficulty, as well as the former commanders who are fully engaged in the peace process by accepting responsibility for their roles in crimes committed during the war. Just last week, the Transitional Justice Courts issued its first accusations against a former general and nine other members of the military for their role in the murder of civilians. It is essential that there is full engagement with this process from state actors who stand accused and international support from the UK government for the transitional justice system is absolutely essential. It is extremely worrying that FARC former combatants continue to be targeted. Over 270 have now been killed since the deal was signed. The peace agreement is a comprehensive agreement and we must do all we can to ensure all its chapters are fully implemented. The violence that we've seen across Colombia over the last few months has run completely out of control. The, government's, the country's police and security forces have used unnecessary violence to contain widespread protests, which has put the historic 2016 peace agreement at severe risk. Since the protests began, videos posted to social media have shown police shooting live ammunition at crowds, firing gas canisters into people's faces, as we've heard, beating isolated protesters, arbitrary arrests, indiscriminate use of high-grade weaponry, and launching tear gas into, into enclosed spaces. This behaviour, we'd all agree, is entirely and completely unacceptable. And we have to be clear that these protests were largely peaceful, but cracked down on against by the violence by the Colombian police and security forces. As young people are beaten and killed and sexually abused on the streets of Colombia, we need the UK government to step up to the plate and send a clear message that such blatant human rights abuses will not be tolerated and will not be accepted. Now we must immediately review our training program with the Colombian police and suspend it immediately if it's going to units involved in the repression of peaceful protests. The Colombian government has continually failed to accept responsibility for the violence carried out by the police. Instead, they've tried to hoodwink the international community. Just yesterday, during a session at the UN Security Council, the Colombian Foreign Minister and Vice President, Martha Lucia Ramirez, bizarrely claimed that the killing of protesters are on people infiltrating the marches and committing vandalism. You know, we shouldn't be fooled. We've witnessed how the Colombian police have attacked peaceful protesters over the, the last few years, not just the last couple of months, and we cannot stay silent in our calls for justice as the Colombian government tried to deflect our attention. The response of Colombia's riot police to the ongoing protests exemplify the country's failing to protect and uphold the human rights of its people. 
The police have responded to protesters with excessive force and violence against overwhelmingly peaceful social prote protests. The Colombian people's cry for the dismantling of the riot police is not unfounded and comprehensive police reform is urgently needed to prevent future significant violations. It's so worrying that the Colombian government has already said it will not implement the latest recommendations from the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights on how to improve the policing of protests. In 2019, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights called on the Colombian state to stop using the military in situations of public protest, while recommending an in-depth tran transformation of the ESMAD riot police and independent investigations into its conduct towards public protest. Sadly, these recommendations are far from being met. Instead, Colombia's Inspector General recently opened investigations against opposition Congress members over their attempts to protect citizens from police violence after they had criticised the Duque government's response to the protest. Last year, Transparency International warned of a concentration of power across Colombian institutions, which was blurring the separation of powers and threatening the democratic process. I believe we must not drop our focus and commitment to supporting internationally to make sure the Colombian peace process, uh, agreement is fully implemented. The recent advances in the transitional justice system are welcome and must be supported, as have been the reports of almost 50% of former FARC uh, combatants who have been able to initiate economic projects. But I believe it is concerning that so many former FARC comb uh, combatants are still waiting to initiate projects. And I understand that there needs to be rapid action to ensure that they access land to accelerate the process. I've always been supportive of the um, uh, making land available. So let's make sure that happens. Equally, the distribution of land to small scale farmers, as stipulated in the agreement, has unfortunately so far not advanced fast enough. We do very firmly state that the response of the Colombian government to the protests must be condemned and the right to protest must be defended. Even the Colombian government's accepted that overwhelmingly there were peaceful demonstrations. And yet that was met, as my friend Fajero has said, with the defence minister calling these demonstrations. Um, a, a terrorist threat by criminal organisations and members of the FARC. 278 of them murdered since the peace accord was signed. Um, a lack of progress on land reform, uh, a lack of progress on things like um, funding those who've given up the growing of, of, uh, of coca leaf in the UK and the impact, which makes it clear that human rights violations um, triggers certain consequences. I think it's about time our government looked at that, that human rights clause in that pact and considered whether now we've got to trigger it. I visited Colombia with JFC in 2018 and I met some of the most inspiring people I have ever met. Trade unionists, mainly mothers, who are putting their lives in danger every single day to fight for a more equal society. I left with the impression of a beautiful country and a proud nation who had seen a glimpse of a chance of peace, but distrust if the government would honour their side of the agreement. Such a, a, a lush, beautiful country, rich in its diversity of peoples as well as its natural resources, and rich in the potential to be a model of sustainable development and conflict resolution, but also at risk of the exact opposite, of backsliding from the progress that has been made, of falling into the hands of those who would exploit and strip the country of its bounty and oppress its people and destroy their cultures. The UK should be looking to activate the democratic clause in the UK Andean Free Trade Agreement, that it should be pushing for civil society participation in the implementation of the peace accord. The UK has a special responsibility as the UN pen holder for Colombia and it should live up to that responsibility. The UK is a key supporter of Colombia's historic 2016 peace agreement and we are proud to lead on the issue at the United Nations Security Council. And we have made clear that we look to the Colombian authorities to fully investigate any reports of excessive use of force and to take appropriate action against those responsible. Let me say that the UK has always supported the vital work of the transitional justice elements of the Peace Corps.